Flat Meridian runs from above the horse's eye. It runs down the length of the spinal column on either side of the spinal column, anywhere from two to three inches um, off the center. From the point of the croup, it goes beside the hock, goes down the side of the leg, alongside the deep flexor tendon, passes over the fetlock, and it goes down to a point above the hoof. Sometimes to relax the horse to start, if your horse is a little tense, you can do little massages on his forehead like this. See his eyes? There we're looking. That's a good, idea. That's a good clear idea of a subtle response, softening of the eyes. If a horse is a little, rat, a little worried about you putting your hand on his pole because he's got tension up there, this is a very good place to start. Another little tip that I've found is if you put your horse, hand up in front of a horse's face like this, a lot of times he's going to pull away. That, that scares him. If you have a horse that pulls away when you do that, uh, I uh, almost always start by putting my hand underneath on the side here, putting my hand under here. That doesn't scare the horse. Reaching for his head often scares a horse if he's not familiar with you and also if he has tension up there. So we'll start on his forehead, just to relax him. You see that look on his eyes? That's working. See his lips? Um, and then we'll start here on the pole on the side, left side. We're going to go slowly and you're going to watch his response. He is, like most horses, has a lot of tension in his neck. And I go so slow that he's not even, he's paying attention and he's not interested in going anywhere, I hope. Or we have to start over. See that spot there? You've probably experienced that before if somebody, when somebody's run their hand over an area that has a little tension in it on you. You can, I don't know if you can hear him breathing, but here in his shoulder, as if is in a lot of horses, right at this point, uh, they store a lot of tension here in the rhomboids and the cervical part of the trapezius muscles. If a horse has a lot of tension in, the, in an area, he'll start to fidget. And usually when a horse fidgets, I just hold my hand gently on that area till they, till they show the release. Often before it start, something, the, the tension starts to release in the horse, he'll, that's a sign it's moving around. It's moving around in there and he'll start to fidget because it's a little uncomfortable. If you gently stay with him and keep him so he's not overexposed, so he stays relaxed, you'll get a release. There we go. See the release? That was the search, response, stay, release. That's the release. Now I'll move on. And you saw him start to fidget before we got that release too. Starts moving around in there and they get a little uncomfortable but they feel good when it's gone. Here we go, another one. Yawning is a good one. Shifting of the legs. I don't remember if I covered that in the responses. Shifting of the legs, trying to get comfortable. Head up. And this is fidgeting. There's something in there. He doesn't want to, it's uncomfortable to let it go. Keep your head up, big guy. That's a sign you, there's something loosening up in there. Stand. Oh. He's fidgeting, he's shifting. I'll keep my hands on here. He just gave a sigh, a, a, and I'll stay here gently. If he stops, sometimes I'll gently massage it a little more, but there's a re release of the breath. I'll keep moving now. There we go. His withers, he's done a lot of work in his life. He's got a lot of tension in his withers here. Head up. And not every horse is different. Some horse might be comfortable with you doing this without fidgeting, but the point is, it's, we have an interaction going here as he looks away. <laughs> He'll be back. We're in an area here, he's breathing hard. We're in an area where there's tension. So on the one hand, it's uncomfortable. But on the other hand, he's sticking with me because it feels good when it comes out. There's some more yawning. This is all release of tension. And this is a, just a start, you know. You'll see when we get going how we really apply this to getting the major area is loose. So we'll continue. There's a release. I won't dwell as long on these areas of tension because it's making him fidget a little and I'd like him to stand for this part of the demonstration. Stand. As we approach the, um, the point of the croup, which is the sacroiliac joint, we'll often find a lot of tension here. But they really like, you can use sometimes just rest your hand on that 
point and get a release from a horse, but we'll be coming down, slowly down, the poverty groove. He's turned the other way. I don't know if you can hear that release, he just, uh, that sigh. He has a lot of tension in these muscles. I can tell he's sighing and releasing his breath. We continue down the poverty groove. Then we come just to the side, whoop, whoop, of this tendon. Alongside the hock. Then there's a groove between the flexor tendon and the hock bone. The most posterior groove, we follow that along, just to the outside, if you were to draw a line down the back of the fetlock in the middle, just to this side of that, we go under the fetlock, under the sesamoid. He's giving me a release on that, he's licking. And this area be to the final, oh big guy. We got, I often get a lot of release with this just gentle touch, this is egg yolk touch down to the ting point, which is the termination of this meridian. The other ting points are one on the anterior aspect of the coronary band on the front, corresponding posterior on the back in that indentation above the sesamoid. And then there are two midway between the, the anterior point and the bladder meridian point here and on the inside. And I'll rest my fingers on these points and watch for the horse's response. Often you get a very big response if there's tension in that ting point. I almost always start on the left side because nine out of ten horses will be tight on the right side of the pole. They'll have con corresponding tension and stress on the right neck and shoulder and corresponding tension and stress in the di diagonal behind which would be the left hind. So I don't know why, it's 9 out of 10 horses, this is the way they are. And you'll notice that uh, they say most horses that come off the track are that way, they don't bend easily to the right. I find that 9 out of 10 horses are that way naturally. That's my logic for starting on the left shoulder. And the left pole, the left shoulder, that gets the horse relaxed on the easy side first. Then I go to the right pole and the right shoulder, because he's already, you've got uh, part of it out, it's easier to get it out on the easy side first and then go to the hard side. Then I go down the right side to the right hind, which is the easier side. And then after the right hind, I'll do the left hind, which is the, the harder side in most cases, because it's the diagonal, um, corresponding diagonal to the right front, left hind.